got a good one in store for you. Bringing you the action from Amity Stadium. For the home team, we've got the Sharks. They're facing off against the Gunslingers. I'm Dan Stevens, and joining me, as always, is Peter O'Keefe. Here are today's lineups, and there are some real standouts, Peter. Raymond Berry and Leroy Selman set the standard for the Gunslingers. These two guys represent the best in football, and the rest of the team ain't too shabby either, for that matter. This is why we watch football, to see players like this work their magic. They'll have their hands full with a top-notch opponent. Joe Montana and James Lofton head up an all-pro group for the Sharks. They're hungry for some points, and I'm not sure they'll be stoppable, especially with their supporting cast being as good as it is. Thank you for that, Peter. Now let's go down to the coin toss. Okay, Ray. You ready to go? Gentlemen, please make your call. We want tails. Tails it is. We want the ball. The Gunslingers have won the toss and select to receive. O'Brien sends it away to begin the game. Perry is coming out with it. Breaks a tackle. Crosses the field. Tackled at the 20. Joe Perry got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Gunslingers send their offense out on the field and will start this drive at their own 20-yard line. This pass will fall harmlessly to the ground, and it's incomplete. Nicholas Wallace was on that fly ball on that last play like glue. Man, he knew where the pass was going, and he stopped it incomplete that had potential for some yards peter but the defense was on top of it and shut it down good right. denial there second down coming up Third down. Third down from the shotgun. Well, Dan, we got an empty backfield, five receivers, and the defense is in their dime. Let's watch. It's intercepted. One man to beat. Forced out at the 13. Y'all see that pick? Textbook, baby. Textbook. Nicholas Wallace times his leap perfectly to swipe away that pass for the interception. Oh, beautiful job. I swear, he is so high, only dogs can hear him. Boy, that was a heads-up play to come away with his first interception of the game. Yeah, you gotta love D like that. The Sharks are going to try and capitalize on the interception. They'll start this drive at the 13-yard line. Montana throws a ball and the reception is made past the markers for a first down. Joe Montana threaded the ball back there to his men right past all that traffic. Good job. First and goal from the Gunslingers. One yard. Ground or air threat here. Let's see what they do, Dan. Foreman takes it off the toss and gets the touchdown. Well, 
This is a nice run, Dan. Gets all the yards he needs. Not a huge quantity of yardage, but definitely some quality yardage, Peter. Absolutely. Great play. That's the first score of the game, and it was very nicely done, Peter. Great execution there. the extra point and it's good don't get down guys this is nothing nothing when we get the lead let's get back out there and crack some heads O'Brien hits a boomer down the field. Perry pounds it in the end zone for a touchback. The Gunslingers, stalled early last drive, will have to see what happens here. We'll start at their own 20-yard line. Brody throws a bullet to the flat and connects at the 19. Second down, both wideouts to the right. Wilkerson penetrates and makes the stop at the 19. Brody throws a beauty to the right side, and it's tipped. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Anton Elfage came in and got a hand on that football. Left no chance for a reception there. Well, the D holds tight on third and long and forces an incompletion. That was a good call by the defensive coordinator. Oh, it sure was. Perfect D for that situation. And it will bring up fourth down. Lee lines up deep in his own territory to punt it away. Lee takes the snap and punts it away. Megan pulls it in at the 42. Stop at the 44. Wednesday, you'll get it, everybody. The Sharks had an effective first drive and we'll see if they can keep it up. They'll start at their 44-yard line. Montana fires this one over the middle and it's intercepted. You can't get that crap past me, man. Scott Studwell picks off the pass because he plays the zone so well here, completely snookering the quarterback. That's just how you do it, folks. You can't coach that. Boy, that was a heads-up play to come away with his first interception of the game. Yeah, you gotta love D like that. The Gunslingers, they have taken the field, and they've been having a tough time passing the ball. They have another opportunity here as we start at their 42-yard line. No good, incomplete. Come on, man. Why'd you make that throw? Just a terrible pass on my part. That's all I mean. Second and ten. Ball at 32 yards. Punch it 
This one left of center and picks up a couple. Floyd Little used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Well, not much of a game there, and they will face third down. Third and long, too, Dan. Big play right. coming up. Third and Falls incomplete. Lee lines up to punt after the three and out. Lee gets the snap and punts it away. Megan fields the punt at the 18. Tackle at the 23. Dave Megan didn't have much room to work with back there. The special team squad made sure he couldn't respond to that really nice punt. The Sharks were intercepted last time out. We'll see what happens here. We'll start at their own 23-yard line. Jones catches the hard throw and gets past the markers for a first down. Brent Jones doesn't let a little thing like double coverage stop him from snagging the football. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chains. And let me tell you, Dan, hearing those chains move is one of the best sounds in the game for an offense. First down, 10 yards to go. Montana throws a ball at and it's complete at the 44. Finally stopped at the 46. First down. Williamson will carry the first down and gains about three yards. Second and six from your Sharks, 49 yards. Montana fires this one over the middle and he connects for a pickup of four on the play. Joe Montana deserves a lot of credit for this play, Dan. He didn't back down and found a way to pipe it through here. A decent play and they'll now face third and short. That's the key, Dan. Make third down easy and they did just that. Now they just need to convert. We'll see what they do. it over the middle and they convert on third down. James Lofton has some company on this play but he still makes the catch. That's good concentration and focus. It's worth another look. Oh, maybe they should have triple covered him there. Nice catch, Peter, and his stats reflect that. Definitely, Dan. He's now got 36 yards on three catches. on the play and that will bring up second down. Second and four from the gunslingers, 28 yards. Call again and barely 
gets past the line of scrimmage for a negligible gain on the play. Chuck Foreman had some blocking help on that last one, but he was still left with nowhere to go. Not a lot of room on that play. It will be third down. Montana floats this one out to the right sideline, and it's tipped incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Mike Jacobs couldn't have read that play any better if it was tattooed on the inside of his helmet. It seemed like the defense read that one from the beginning, and they forced the incompletion with relative ease. Beautiful call by the D coordinator. It'll be fourth down. O'Brien with the 44-yard attempt, and he knocks it through the uprights. Michael O'Brien knocks through a good-sized kick. Watch here. Nowhere close to his max, but he's obviously still very pleased to pull it off. O'Brien hits a boomer down the field. Perry pounds it in the end zone for a touchback. The Gunslingers haven't gotten much out of their offense recently and are looking to get back on track here. This drive begins at their own 20-yard line. Little gets the call on first down and barely picks up the first down. Nice gain on this baby. Look at him eat up the yardage here. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chains. And let me tell you, Dan, hearing those chains move hey. is one of the best That's sounds in the game for an offense. Brody throws a bullet to the flat, and the ball is caught at the 28, tackled at the 36. Floyd Little made the catch and iced the cake with a few more yards. Way to fight for more, buddy. They move the ball, and it will be second down. Second and five. Parker has a nice catch and gets past the markers for a first down. John Brody made a nice throw there, got it right past the defender. Nice second down call and they will move the chain. On offense, it was always a plus to avoid third down altogether just like that. First down, three wide outs in the game. Gets the ball and kicks left. Stopped at the 44. Floyd Little used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Second and nine from the Gunslinger, 24 yards. is about three and that will bring up third down. Kirk Wyland targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. They forced that one backwards and that's going to make this third down that much harder. Yeah, they also make it easier on themselves by wiping out all of the potential short yardage plays they might face. Third and long.
Brody unloads this to the right sideline, and they get the first on third and long. He picks up 18 yards on the play. First down, gunslingers. Anton Elfage eventually gets there, but I don't know why he even bothered. Big gain, and they'll move the chains. Well, he eventually stops him, but way past the marker, this one's going to hurt. On third and long, the defense cannot dig in and stop them. you got to grit your teeth in those circumstances and just not let them get you. No way, no how. First down, tight end to the left. He's got the first down and a whole lot more. John Brody wings it across the field and finds his man. That, my friends, is a strong arm. Nice pass, Peter, and he's really lighting up the stat sheet. Oh, you got it. So far, he's got 51 yards and one interception. First and ten. Gets his seventh carry of the game, and it's wide left. Plummer tackles him for a short loss. Gary Plummer got a great jump on the play and brings the ball carrier down for a loss in the backfield. Nice defensive stop. That's his third tackle of the game. Second and ten. Is this a great drive or what? Slingers, 22 yard line. His number called on second down and picks up a couple. Joe Perry got some help on that one in the form of blocking, but he still couldn't make a play out of it. Well, not much of a game there, and they will face third down. Third and long, too, Dan. Big play coming up. One deep to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. Late hit, number three, defense. Half the distance to the goal. Nicholas Wallace tackles his man on this play well after the whistle blew. Watch this again. Oh, yeah, a clear cut case of unnecessary roughness. Huggins is back to the point after. McCurry will hold the kick. Now the extra point, and it's the good. Point is good. Huggins kicks it off. Maggot catches it back at the one. <laughs> Down at the 23. Dave Maggot is able to find some weak spots in the defense. Got a good run back off that kick. The Sharks came away with three last time out and are looking for more. They'll start this drive at their own 23-yard line. Foreman will get the carry on first down and gets just past the line, but not by much before being brought down. Chuck Foreman used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more.
Montana throws a bullet to the flat and is complete at the 23. Finally stopped at the 38. First down. Chuck Foreman keeps it in the family on this play, and he had a lot of brothers to help him. Yeah, that design run was a success because he followed his blockers. Without him, he wouldn't have gone anywhere. A well-designed play there, Peter, and they will move the chain. Right execution. First and ten from Coach Sharks, 38 yards. Block grabs the baseball over the middle and tries to get free, and he's stopped right there. Wesley Walker had nobody on him. The quarterback saw it and got the ball to him. They move the ball, and it will be second down. Second down, and they line up with three tight ends. Sharks, 43 yards. Montana zings it to the right side, and it's caught at the 46, stopped at the 49. We have a flag on the plate. Let's listen to the call. Neutral zone infraction, number 96, defense, the penalty is declined. First and ten. Ball at the 49 yard line. Williams catches it in the flat, and that will be a gain of three yards. Soon with the tackle. Second and seven. Third down, and this is the seventh play of the drive. Lofton catches it over the middle, and they convert on third down. Joe Montana uncorks a dynamite pass there with two defenders on the prowl. Really incredible accuracy, but I'll tell you, that's got a sting if you're on the defense. Righto, Dano. You know, they could have brought eight guys on that play. Wouldn't have made a difference. Again, he uses the middle of the field to advance the football. And uh -huh. Dan, why not? Well, they, they found some seams, some crease right in the middle, and, well, they feel they can take advantage of it at any time. Montana throws a heater right sideline and he connects at the 19 and he stopped right there. Ineligible receiver, number 85, off it, off yard penalty, repeat, first down. Wesley Walker got hit by the ball. He wasn't expecting it, didn't mean to, but unfortunately he was an ineligible receiver and that's a penalty. And that'll do it for quarter number one. The Sharks with a small lead, 10 to 7. Let's keep doing what we're doing.
Reese tips it away on the coverage, incomplete. Moses Reese came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. That had potential for some yards, Peter, but the defense was on top of it and shut it down. Good denial there. Second down coming up. Man, we need more out of you. Where you been today? Don't worry, man. I'm going to get it turned around. Three more. Second and 15 from the Gunslingers, 28 yard line. The 23. Third and ten. Interceptor. Lock down at the 15. The Gunslingers passed well last time out. We'll see if they stick to the passing game as they start this drive at their own 15-yard line. Brody tips it to the left sideline and gets intercepted. Left down at the one. It'll be first and goal. Brian Brown heists that pass beautifully, but he's not the sort of player who gets satisfied easily. No, he is not. That is a huge run he tacks on there to give his offense some very favorable field position. That's right, Dan. He would have run it to the end zone himself, but that would have been greedy. Got to leave something for the offense to do. Boy, that was a heads-up play to come away with his first interception of the game. Yeah, you got to love D like that. The Sharks had their last drive stalled at the tail end. We'll see if they can keep momentum throughout this one, which starts at the one-yard line. Well, I bet we see the pass here. Right to his go-to receiver. Barber catches it in the flat, and he's in for the score. This is a nice run here. And when you watch the replay, Dan, check out his field vision. Great job of finding space. That was his second rushing touchdown of the day. Not a bad day at the office so far. That's typical production for him, Dan. He's that kind of player. the extra point and it's good O'Brien kicks it away. Joe Perry took it out of the end zone. And while it may have been a little risky, he gets out close to the 20. So it all comes out in the wash on that play. The Gunslingers must feel like they need to score this time out. This drive will start at their own 22-yard line. Little will get the handoff and runs into traffic. Underwood takes him down back at the 21. Zach Underwood would not be denied and dropped him for a huge loss. Big play. Another tackle, and he's starting to fill up the stat book. He is dominating, Dan. So far, he's got five tackles. Little takes this one way out left and picks up a couple.
Brody throws this one over the middle and it's tipped incomplete fourth down coming up Leroy Butler gets a hand on this one right there that's how you play D well the D holds tight on third and long and forces an incompletion that was a good call by the defensive coordinator oh, it sure was perfect D for that situation and it will bring up fourth down Gets the ball and punts it away. Maggot hauls it in at the 34. Drag down at the 36. That ain't the kind of guitar cover, baby. The Sharks come out on offense and they are well ahead. They'll start this drive at their 36 yard line. Chews up four yards, and that will bring up second down. Second and six. Ball at the 40 yard. Incomplete. Ben Clay couldn't get all the way positioned for the interception, but still managed to graze the ball with his fingertips. A nice throw down the field, but the defense plays it perfectly. Great coverage downfield that time. Third down from the eye. Third and six. Ball at the 40 yard. Montana throws the bullet and the completion is made. Short of the markers, however. That will bring up fourth down. Seth Cologne shut down the ball carrier just before he got to the markers. A good game, but not good enough. That's his third tackle of the game. Your Sharks have selected the punt. Up church is D2 receiver. Parker takes the long snap and punts it away. Upchurch fields the punt at the 18. Tackled hard at the 20. The Gunslingers take the field and their running game hasn't generated much other than a big play here or there. We'll see how they fare as we start at their own 20-yard line. Brody throws a bullet to the flat, and the reception is made for a pickup of maybe a yard. Second down, both tight ends left. Got the first down and a whole lot more. First down, gunslingers. Don Maynard is squeezed by two defenders on this play, but still comes up with the ball. Oh, that's pure skill. You can't coach that. A beautiful pickup, Peter. Everyone on the offense is happy about that play. Definitely. Great call by the offensive coordinator. Little 
takes his 10th carry of the game and heads up field, brought down at the 47. With the carry, a pickup of seven on the play. Butler credited with the tackle. Oh. Second and two from the gunslinger, 47 yards. The 49. Zach Underwood saw where that play was going right away and stopped it cold for a loss of yardage. A beautiful hit on that one. He really brought some thunder with him. And he rained on the offense's hopes of gaining some yards. In fact, the rest of this drive may get a little overcast. Peter, he's been lighting up the defensive side of the ball today and getting some nice numbers out of it. You bet. So far, he's got six tackles. Logan fires this one over the middle, and it's off incomplete. Lawrence Jennings snuck across the middle that time but could not make a play on the ball. Peter, in third down situations, they have not been successful at all with the pass. This play was more proof. Boy, third is such a crucial down, Dan. And when you don't convert, it really hurts. Lee gets the snap and hits a beauty. Let the punt bounce for a touchback. Eric Lee saw his kick go squirrely on him for a touchback. <laughs> Tough luck. The Sharks will start this drive at their own 20-yard line. Montana throws a bullet to the flat and he connects at the 18, runs out of bounds at the 30. Chuck Foreman got a little progress, but not nearly enough to move the chains. Getting only part of the way there is sort of like kissing your sister. Yeah, speaking of which, Dan, my sister asked me to tell you to cut it out. Hey, why I ought to. Peter, what a nice pickup to get them into a second and short Go situation. Down. Yeah, great second play, and now they have a bunch of options on what to try next. Second down and less than a yard. Up about two, and that will bring up first down. First down. First and ten from the Sharks, 82 yards. Montana throws a leader. Complete at the 41, chased down at the 46. It will be first down. 14 yards on the play. First down, Sharks. First and 10. All of 46 yards. Wesley Walker sees that he's singled out there and does just enough in that pattern to gain separation. Oh, he knew where he had to be and got his hands in position to haul that one in. Another short, quick strike, and the defense looks helpless to stop this ball control strategy. Yeah, it's a great game plan this offense has been executing, no doubt about it. First down with a split backfield. Foreman picks up six on the play, and that brings up second down. Pick up 
Make an infill. Meggett dodges this one way out right and jukes to a first down. Dave Meggett got yards by staying so close to his blockers, I think they were sharing each other's aftershave. Nice second down call, and they will move the chain. On offense, it was always a plus to avoid third down altogether, just like that. Chews up four yards, and that will bring up second down. Second and five from the Gunslinger, 27 yards. short loss. Scott Studwell targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. That's his second tackle so far. Third and six from the gunslinger, 28 yard Montana lets it go here and it's tipped. Incomplete. That will bring up fourth down. Seth Cologne knocked that pass down. And he made sure the only one to touch the football was him. That was the fourth time they've swatted the ball out of the air and the offense is looking frustrated. The D is showing excellent fundamentals right here. No points here! We're going to bust to the line and block this kick! Fourth down and the field goal unit is on the field. O'Brien with the 45-yard attempt and puts it through. It's good. Michael O'Brien sends it whizzing between the goalposts for a field goal straight down the pike. O'Brien kicks it off. Joe Perry took it out of the end zone. And while it may have been a little risky, he gets out close to the 20. So it all comes out in the watch on that play. The Gunslingers haven't gotten much out of their offense recently and are looking to get back on track here. This drive begins at their own 23-yard line. Marchetti makes the sack at the 21. Gino Marchetti gets a sack in the backfield. The quarterback had nowhere to go on this one. Let's watch. Yep, the D shut the offense down on that play. They couldn't do anything. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Marchetti gets the sack way back at the 14. Let's quickly get back to the sack on the last play. That was some ferocious defense. Oh, yeah, Dan. Gino Marchetti is not the guy you want to see across from you if you're on the offensive line because he's going to leave some marks on him. He is one of the most rugged, physical players in the league. And he'll do whatever it takes to get to the QB.
They couldn't connect on this one. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. John Parker ran a post pattern on that last play, but he couldn't make the catch. That would have given them the first down of a third and very, very long. A potential big play, but only potential. Yeah, it's a heartbreaker to have it drawn up right, but just not get it executed. Lee gets ready to punt it away. Gets the ball and punts it away. Megan catches it at the 42. Stop at the 48. Dave Megan got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Sharks get great field position yet again. They'll start this one at their 48-yard line. Foreman has his number called on first down and maybe picks up one on the play. Second down. Nine yards to go. Foreman picks up about two, and that brings up third down. Third and six. Williamson catches the hard throw and they get the first on third and long. Joe Montana has great accuracy on this throw. Yeah, he put the ball right where his guy could get it. And the defender couldn't. Nice toss. He's been on point with the short pass so far, Dan. That pattern's worked so well, we're probably going to see it over and over again. Well, why not, Peter? His receivers are open and making grabs, and nobody has really stopped him from doing it. Foreman picks up about two, and that brings up second down. Second down, and they line up with three tight ends. Williamson hauls in the pass and is at the 30. Drag down at the 28. Second down. Chuck Foreman played smart and used his blockers to perfection on that last play. Peter, what a nice pickup to get them into a second and short situation. Yeah, great play, and now they have a bunch of options on what to try next.
Loft makes the catch out to the left and gets past the markers for a first down. Montana throws a heater right sideline and he's on target for a gain of five. Wesley Walker had a defender close by but was able to bring down the catch. This guy can really twist up the coverage in that short area. That's right, Dan. Those quick routes have been open for him all day. Obviously, that's what the defense wants to give him. Second and five. Wesley Walker had three guys covering him, but look what happens. Incredible catch. This is a take-no-prisoners kind of guy when he is in the red zone. Oh, after piling up some good yardage on the day, he makes a big play here for a score. the extra point and it's good O'Brien kicks it away. Perry fields the kickoff at the one. Stop at the 25. Joe Perry received that nice kick and a nice little run back after the catch. Good job. The Gunslingers are fading fast and desperately need to score. Their offense will start this drive at their own 25-yard line. Hauls him down in the backfield and the clock continues to run. QB killer, ain't you? Man, he wasn't getting away from me. Green snags the dart right sideline, and he picks up nine. John Brody demonstrated his arm strength back there with a solid cross-field pass. You have to respect this offensive game plan. That was their third connection downfield today, Peter. Yep, the coaches must have found a weak spot in that secondary. Third down and five wide receivers take the field. Brody lets it go down the right side, and it's caught at the 50, 25, 15, 5, touchdown! Raymond Berry is going to make a great play right here. 
snags the football, and then really turns on the juice. That is why he's on your football team. He took advantage of the coverage, made the catch, and added six more to the books. You know, Dan, there are players who impact the game, and there are players who flat out score touchdowns. He does both. Here's the point after, and it's good. And that'll do it for the first half of this one. The Sharks enjoying the lead 27 to 14. Okay, Dan, let's get this halftime show started. What do you have for us? Well, here's a look at our halftime stats, and as you can see, it paints a pretty clear picture. The Sharks are winning because of it. Let's see if they can keep up their dominance in the second half. Let's get started in this one early in the first quarter. Wallace was in the right place at the right time as his interception was a possible momentum shifter. Still in the first quarter, the Sharks with a goal-to-go situation. Foreman found a little opening, and that was all he needed. A one-yard touchdown for the home team. Later on in the first, the Sharks ahead by seven. Studwell is reading the quarterback's eyes all the way, and he's able to get his hands on this one and picks it off. The Sharks again have it. O'Brien would come on and connect on the field goal try. A 45-yard field goal. The Sharks ahead 10 to nothing. Brody went to the air trying to convert on third down and he found his man. An 18-yard play that set up a visitor's touchdown. The Gunslingers climb back into the game, now down by three. The Sharks, now in the second quarter, ball at the 24. Cody was in the right place at the right time as his interception was a possible momentum shifter. After a red zone stop, the Gunslingers trailing by three. Brown is reading the quarterback's eyes all the way and he's able to get his hands on this one and picks it off. The Sharks, later in the second, Foreman did his part by getting himself open on this one. Touchdown for the home team. The Sharks, out in front, 17 to seven. Brody would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. Unfortunately, the drive stopped shortly afterwards and they had to punt it away. After driving 52 yards on nine plays, O'Brien would be summoned for the long field goal try and his kick would be right through. The Sharks connect on their second field goal. Late into the second quarter, the Sharks winning by 13. Montana needed to be on target here and he was. They have opened it up and now lead by 20. The Gunslingers, last play of the half, Barry was definitely a key player as he was able to work his way open for a big one here. A 71-yard touchdown for the visitors. And that will do it. The Sharks are up big at the half, 27 to 14. Nice job, Dan. The Sharks get the ball first this half and another score by them could really open up this game. They currently lead 27 to 14. Now let's get to the game. Huggins sends it away to begin the second half. Megat is coming out with it. The 23. Dave Meggett took it out of the end zone, and while it may have been a little risky, he gets out close to the 20, so it all comes out in the wash on that play. The Sharks come out on offense, and they are well ahead. They'll start this drive at their own 23-yard line.
Jacobs makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. We have a flag on the play. Let's listen to the call. Pass interference, number five. <laughs> Automatic first down. Dwight Jacobs slapped around the receiver way too much on that play, and the ref let him know it with a flag for pass interference. First and ten from the Sharks, 29 yards. Lacouch brings him down behind the line at the 26. Corey Lacouch makes a nice stop in the backfield here, throwing his man into the turf behind the line. I guess the ball carrier's travel plans were canceled. Oh, he's not going anywhere. Pow, you're down. Nice tackle. Peter, he's been lighting up the defensive side of the ball today and getting some nice numbers out of it. You bet. So far, he's got five tackles. Rakuch makes a play on this one and forces the incompletion. Corey Rakuch turned his hips to get into position and tipped that ball away. Solid coverage. Yet another big play by this defense. That was their fifth batted ball today. Yeah, you can see them start to anticipate the path of the throw the right. minute the quarterback winds up. 13 from the Sharks, 26 yards. Montana really rifles this pass, and it's tipped incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Seth Cologne came in and got a hand on that football and left no chance for a reception there. You know, Peter, if this were volleyball, that would have been the defense's sixth spike of the match. Yeah, the O keeps setting it up, and the D keeps sending it back. Barker lines up for the punt. Oh, yeah, butter. I'm coming. Parker gets the ball and hits a beauty. Upchurch fields the deep run at the 27. Tackled hard at the 32. You shouldn't even have tried to bring that one back. What's wrong with you? Man, there's still plenty of time left. First and ten from the Gunslingers, 32 yards. Brody zips it to the left sideline and it's complete at the 41 and he stopped right there. Raymond Berry was wide open on that play. Makes you wonder if the defensive coordinator wants to keep his job or not. Peter, no one seems to be able to stop this guy on the left side. They've found him a few times over there. Yeah, he's been running sharp routes, but it makes you wonder about the coverage over to that area. Second down, just a single receiver on the field. about seven and that will bring up first down floyd little played smart and used his blockers to perfection on that last play nice second down call and they will move the chain on offense it was always a plus to avoid third down altogether just like that Stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Second and nine from the Gunslinger, 48 yards. Hey. 
little. And he's never called on second down and will end up losing a couple. Kevin Polamalu read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. Nice job eliminating any forward progress on that play. That will bring up a third and long. Brody zings it to the right side and it's complete at the 45 and he's stopped right there. Hampton with the tackle. Fourth down coming up. Dave Hampton shut down the ball carrier just before he got to the markers. A good game, but not good enough. There's a migraine waiting to happen for a defensive coordinator. They almost gave it up. Yeah, but they didn't let him convert. It's still going to go to fourth down. Fourth and short. Fourth down and they're going for it. The Gunslingers want to talk it over, and they take their first time out. Lee gets ready to punt it away. Gets the ball and punts it away. The Sharks find themselves in dangerous territory and will start this one way back at their own six-yard line. up one on the play. Chuck Foreman had some blocking help on that last one, but he was still left with nowhere to go. Not much there. It'll be second down. Got to take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for second more. Ball at the seven yard line. Brings up third down. Chuck Foreman used the blocking, but this stingy defense didn't give up much at all on that last play. Well, not much of a gain there, and they will face third down. Third and long, too, Dan. Big play coming up. call on third down and gets taken down well short of the markers that will bring up fourth down scott studwell brought down the ball carrier before the markers there was some gain there but not enough for the first he now has five tackles in the game barker gets ready to punt it from out of his own end zone Barker takes the long snap and punts it away. Upchurch fields the punt at the 48. Stopped at 
at the 44. Rick Upchurch did a nice job getting some yards after fielding the solid punt. Man, I don't care what the score is. We're coming back, baby. It starts right now. First and ten from the Sharks, 34 yards. Brings up second down. Eric Wilkerson read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Little gets the toss and runs into traffic. Gets him for a loss. 49. Gary Plummer keeps his man from getting back to the line. Let's watch. Pow! Oh, that's got to hurt. That will be two losses in a row. Great reads by the D on the last two plays, Dan. Just short of the first down. That will bring up fourth down. Anton Elfage finally makes the stop after a good gain and keeps them short of the marker. Let's have another look. He prevented him from getting a new set of downs by forcing him out. They allow a bunch of yards, but they do not allow the first. They hold strong on the yards that mattered most. Ooh, they almost let that one get away from him. Almost, but not quite. Fourth down and less than a yard. Huggins launches the 52-yard attempt, and it's no good. It bounced off the upright and then out. Donnie Huggins doinks the upright here. Let's watch this again. Well, sure, Dan, it's a little embarrassing, but isn't that what instant replay is all about? A player screws up, and it's our ratings grabber. The Sharks have had some trouble moving the ball recently. We'll see what they do on this drive that starts at their 42-yard line. well past the markers for a first down on the field. it looks like we have an injury down on the field as soon as we hear anything we'll be sure to pass the information along to you James Lofton goes down on this play ouch man that cannot feel good First down, three wideouts in the game. From the gunslingers, 43 yards. Foreman takes it across the line and gains about three yards. A pickup of three on the play. Studwell with the tackle. Second and seven from the Gunslingers, 40 yards. Hart makes the hit in the backfield at the 42. Jimmy Hartz would not be denied and dropped them for a huge loss. Big play. Nice job eliminating any forward progress on that play. That will bring up a third and long. Third and nine from the Gunslingers, 42 yards.
Montana gets a heater, and the reception is made past the markers for a first down. Bobby Williamson makes the catch with three defenders on his case. I just don't know why uh, the throw was made into triple covering. Hey, it worked. Yes, it did. Whoa, this is a nice surprise. The coaches have made him involved, resulting in yet another catch. Yeah, working your runner into the throwing scheme poses huge matchup problems for the defense, and you saw it there. First down with a split backfield. Picks up four on the play. Melvin Nielsen made the grab as the coverage seemed like they were in another world. Whose man is he? Another short, quick strike, and the defense looks helpless to stop this ball control strategy. Yeah, it's a great game plan this offense has been executing, no doubt about it. Montana throws a bullet to the left hand. This kind of pickup should be no problem for us. Third and three. Convert on third down. Melvin Nielsen has three guys on this play looking for the interception, but they don't get it. He says, I'll take that, thank you very much. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful catch. The defense should be shaking their heads. A nice gain, and they easily convert on third down. Yeah, that was a good call. First and ten. Selman makes the hit in the backfield at the 15. Leroy Selman would not be denied and dropped him for a huge loss. Big play. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. brings up third down. Leroy Selman targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. That's his second tackle so far. Yeah! Third Let's go, D! Let's keep it up! The gunslingers, 18 yard. Montana throws a bullet to the flat and caught. Well short of the markers, however. That will bring up fourth down. Brent Jones got out of bounds after getting some yardage, but you can tell that it wasn't as much as he wanted. Not enough there, and that will bring up fourth down. Yeah, didn't get the look they wanted, and they ended up short. O'Brien, the back to attempt a field goal from Old Robin. Robin on the hole. O'Brien from 29 yards out, and it's through the goalposts and good. Michael O'Brien has little trouble pooching this one through. Let's see it again. Yep, he knows that you aren't allowed to miss many of those in this league. For the first time today, they leave the red zone with only a field goal to show for it. You know, overall, Dan, the defense has to be happy with how that one played out. O'Brien booms one downfield. Perry pounds it in the end zone for a touchback.
The Gunslingers must feel like they need to score this time out. This drive will start at their own 20-yard line. Little throws it in the flat, and he's looking for room. Stopped at the 25. Lofton had to leave the field earlier in the game, and now we've gotten word on his condition. Peter? After coming off the field a little gingerly, the trainers have determined that he's pulled his calf muscle. They are icing it down, but it looks like he should be ready to come back in soon. Thanks, Peter. Second down, five yards to go. Perry gets the toss and runs into traffic. Butler brings him down behind the line at the 23. Leroy Butler targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. They don't let that play get back to the line of scrimmage, and that will bring up third down. Parker hauls it in right side, and they get the first on third and long. John Brody completes a nice pass past the D on this play. It's worth another look here. Oh, it's all about accuracy, Dan, and there was only one guy covering him on that one, so it makes it an easy catch. That's his fourth deep connection of the day, and at some point, the defense has to react. Well, it's like the secondary's been sleepwalking through this. short line. Norman Meyer targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Third down. Anton Elfage read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. Another good stop by the defense, and that will be two losses in a row. Throws this one over the middle, and it's tipped. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Brian Brown read that one right out of the receiver's break and denied it. That was the fourth time they've swatted the ball out of the air, and the offense is looking frustrated. The D is showing excellent fundamentals right here. the long snap and punts it away. Megan catches it at the 30. Great screen, left down at the 34. Dave Megan didn't have much room to work with back there. The special team squad made sure he couldn't respond to that really nice punt. The Sharks offense takes the field, and they have been very effective through the air. We'll see what happens as we start this drive at their 34-yard line. Montana zips it to the left side, and the reception the 38, locked down hard at the 45. It will be first down. Melvin Nielsen gets open and gets the football for a game there. Watch this again. He is wide open. The defense clearly fell apart on that one. Well, you can't leave anyone that open in pro football or they will make you pay. That was exactly what the offense wanted. Good job not to even let it get to third down. He was still short of the yardage marker when he received that ball, but his legs and determination got him the first.
Walker grabs the bullet and he's just barely past the markers for a first. And that'll do it for the third quarter. The Sharks enjoying the lead 30 to 14. Keith Millard comes in untouched on this play and just wallops the quarterback. Where was the O-line? Did they just give up? Oh, yeah, the quarterback's going to be pointing some fingers on that one. The defensive design worked flawlessly, and the refs will spot the ball well behind the original line of scrimmage. What a way to derail a series from the onset. Second and long ahead. Foreman loses about three, and that brings up third down. Corey Rakuch got a great jump on the play and brings the ball carrier down for a loss in the backfield. Nice defensive stop. He's been working hard so far. That's his eighth tackle. And each one of those eight left a bruise. That guy can hit. Montana passes a high, long one, and it's tipped. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Come on, D. Desire, baby. Desire. Barker lines up for the punt. Back to punt. Up church. Barker takes the snap and punts it away. Upchurch makes a fair catch no at the 16. Spotted at the 17-yard line. We are first and ten from the gunslinger, 17-yard line. gets back to the line of scrimmage but not quite before he's taken down zach underwood targeted the ball carrier early and didn't even let him get back to the line of scrimmage peter he's been lighting up the defensive side of the ball today and getting some nice numbers out of it you bet so far he's got seven tackles little carries it for the Gains close to 10 yards on the play. Boyd Little took advantage of some really good blocking there on that last run. When you get the initial surge like that, good things happen, especially in the ground game. Another run up the gut, and we've seen him take more than his share of carries there. He's definitely had lanes to run through. Yeah, superb blocking up front, too. convert the third down. Joe Perry played it smart back there by following his blockers and that allowed him to make some good yards. A nice play and with only a short distance to the first, they put it together and make it happen. Yeah, third and short always looks easy, but it's not, Dan. That's good execution. First down from the shotgun. Listen up. Goal, 74. Maynard catches this one, and he's got the first down and a whole lot more. 
21 on the play. First down, gunslingers. Don Maynard has a guy shadowing him, but still manages to make the catch. He beats his man cold. It's all about staking your turf. Here they connect with him again. That's the second deep ball he's grabbed today. Well, without an adjustment in that secondary, Dan, I guarantee you he's going to come back for more. Little will get the carry on first down and maybe picks up one on the play. Second and nine. Ball at the 50 yard line. Little gains three yards, and that will bring up third down. Third down and four wideouts in the game. Brody zings it to the right side and it's complete at the 43. Tackled at the 40. First down. John Brody bought an extra second or two there by sticking to his guns and hanging tough in the pocket. Great effort. How many times can this guy blast him downfield? He has been unstoppable today. Oh, it's like a war zone out there, Dan. The defense is just getting bombed right and left. Upchurch didn't haul that one in, and it falls incomplete. Second and ten from the gunslinger, 40 yards. Gets the ball on second down and will gain close to six. Floyd Little stayed with his blockers on that last one and it paid off big time. You know, Dan, it's always good to have a wingman or two. They move the ball and that'll bring up third down. Takes it off the toss and passes the line. Stop at the 32. Howell will be credited with the tackle. Fourth down coming up. Derek Howell has planted the ball carrier in the turf short of the markers. But, you know, Dan, the only thing that's going to grow is this D's morale. He now has five tackles in the game. Boots it from 49 yards out, and this one is up and in. Donnie Huggins really gets the whole ball here, and he needed it. Watch. That's a powerful kick for three points, my friend. When he needs to, he can boot that thing. Huggins boots the heck out of this one. Maggot is coming out with it. Breaks the tackle. Stop at the 25. Dave Maggot took it out of the end zone, and while it may have been a little risky, he gets out close to the 20, so it all comes out in the wash on that play. The Sharks had their last drive stall at the tail end. We'll see if they can keep momentum throughout this one, which starts at their own 25-yard line.
Cologne takes him down back at the 22. With the pick. Cologne credited with the tackle for a loss of three on the play. Seth Cologne makes a nice stop in the backfield here, throwing his man into the turf behind the line. I guess the ball carrier's travel plans were canceled. Oh, he's not going anywhere. Pow, you're down. Nice tackle. Peter, he's been lighting up the defensive side of the ball today and getting some nice numbers out of it. You bet. So far, he's got five tackles. This one will fall incomplete. Chuck Foreman found an empty seam in the coverage, but the throw couldn't find him. Nothing frustrates an open receiver more. Peter, they cannot seem to connect on the long ball. They've taken some shots there, but it, nothing is working. Yeah, their timing is off. They need to go to shorter passes. Third and 13. Ball at the 22-yard line. Tried to make something happen back there, but nothing doing. How about blocking this thing? Come on, let's swarm this guy. Barker right. lines up to punt Four after shots. the three and out. Look at the punt. Up church is deep to receive. Barker gets the ball and punts it away. Upchurch feels the punt at the 38. Tackled at the 43. Rick Upchurch got swarmed by the kicking team before he got very far. That nice punt pretty much goes unanswered. The Gunslingers came away with three last time out and are looking for more. They'll start this drive at their 43-yard line. Brody throws a bullet to the flat and the catch is made for a gain of a couple. John Brody laid this pass in beautifully, rendering the defense irrelevant. When you can make accurate throws like that, the whole field starts to open up for you. Oh, again to the left. Oh. Right. Yeah. The defense still hasn't adjusted to the guys catching the ball or to the guy throwing it. Well, if there's one thing you can say about this offense, it's that it doesn't let up on, on what's working for them. <laughs> Little loses about three, and that will bring up third down. Gino Marchetti read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. That will be his fourth tackle so far. What do you think of his performance, Peter? Solid game, Dan. Really carrying his sizable weight out there. Brody throws the pass, and the ball's caught at the 30. 20, 10, breaks a tackle, touchdown! Raymond Berry really spanks the defense at the end of this one. Yep, solid grab, and then he takes off like a thief. Give him an inch, and he'll steal every yard he can. He gets the TD, and a little congratulations from his teammates. It's well-deserved, Dan. Huggins is back for the point after. McCurry will hold the kick. Here's the point after, and it's good. Booms one downfield. Maggot pounds it in the end zone for a touchback.
The Sharks, stalled early last drive, will have to see what happens here. We'll start at their own 20-yard line. Sermon brings him down behind the line at the 17. Chuck Sermon makes a nice stop in the backfield here, throwing his man into the turf behind the line. I guess the ball carrier's travel plans were canceled. Oh, he's not going anywhere. Pow, you're down. Nice tackle. He's been working hard so far. That's his eighth tackle. And each one of those eight left a bruise. That guy can hit. Montana throws this on a rope, and it's tipped incomplete. McAllister Cody anticipated the trajectory of that pass and stuck his hand in at the last moment. Great play. Oh, for... This is getting ridiculous. The offense just cannot get the ball past the reach of these defenders. You're right, Dan, and that's been one of the big stories of this game. Studwell makes a play on this and forces the incompletion. It'll be fourth down. Scott Studwell couldn't have read that play any better if it was tattooed on the inside of his helmet. Well, the D holds tight on third and long and forces an incompletion. That was a good call by the defensive coordinator. Oh, it sure was. Perfect D for that situation. And it will bring up fourth down. Parker takes the long snap and punts it away. Upchurch catches it at the 44. Brought down at the 47. The Gunslingers got into the end zone last time they had it, and they're looking to do it again. They'll start at their 47-yard line. <laughs> Little picks up a yard on the play, and that brings up second down. forward for seven. Floyd Little played it smart back there by following his blockers and that allowed him to make some good yards. Another run up the gut and we've seen him take more than his share of carries there. He's definitely had lanes to run through. Yeah, superb blocking up front too. Third down, two tight ends in the game. There he snags the dart right sideline and they convert on third down. Raymond Berry got out of bounds and got the first. Nice run. A big gain on third, and they will easily move the chain. Perfect call for the situation, Dan. No trouble in getting the first. Great. First and ten from the Sharks, 39 yards. Brody zips it to the left sideline, and he's on target for a gain of five. Rick Upchurch had a defender playing him close, but shook him at the last moment. You can't coach that. Right there, he was able to make a good grab and pick up a couple of yards. That's the kind of play that can put a lot of pressure on a defense. They tried to stop him, but just couldn't get it done. Little catches it left sideline and loses yards on that one. 
Lloyd Little ran out of bounds before he got back to the line of scrimmage, Dan. Maybe he thought he was playing on one of those wider metric system fields. They don't get back down to the line that time, and that will bring up third down. You ain't playing like yourself today, man. We need you to pick it up. I need some help out here, man. I can't do it all myself. Hey. Brody rifles it out left side, and it's knocked down at the line incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Eric Green ran a short route back there and seemed to be open, but he just couldn't make the grab. Disappointing incompletion. Peter, in third down situations, they have not been successful at all with the pass. This play was more proof. Boy, third is such a crucial down, Dan. And when you don't convert, it really hurts. Fourth down, and the field goal unit is on the field. Huggins launches the 52-yard attempt and just makes it inside the left upright. Johnny Huggins really gets the whole ball here, and he needed it. Watch. That's a powerful kick for three points, my friend. When he needs to, he can boot that thing. Huggins booms one downfield. Maggot is coming out with it. Brought down at the 21. Dave Maggot got out close to the 20 on that one, so his decision to take it out of the end zone didn't really pay off, but it didn't really hurt him either. The Sharks take the field with time winding down. They'll start at their own 21-yard line. Foreman gets the handoff and searches for a hole. Reed brings him down behind the line at the 18. Todd Reed read that play perfectly and makes the tackle behind the line, pushing them back a few yards in the process. Great effort. They put a stop to this play behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty good call by the defensive coordinator. Agreed, Dan. They, they had it all locked up there. That will bring up second down. Maggot carries it off the toss and takes it upfield. Brought down at the 26. Saul Andrews used every ounce of his big self to do some key blocking on that last play. Nice gain, and that puts them in a very convertible third down situation. Yeah, you know, Dan, my last convertible was a 72 Nova. You know, Peter, it's no wonder you were a lineman. <laughs> Foreman will get the carry on third down and... Ben Clay brought down the ball carrier before the markers. There was some gain there, but not enough for the first. He's got seven tackles so far. They only need a couple here. So let's buckle down, guys! Go, guys! Your Sharks are back to punt. Up church is deep to receive. Barker lines up for the punt. Barker gets the snap and punts it away. Upchurch fields the punt at the 31. Stop at 
to 47. Ball will be placed around 47 yards. Rick Upchurch has a nice return coming up here off this punt. Watch. It's impressive the way he can make the right choices to keep the run back going. You can't coach that. The Gunslingers will start this drive near midfield with the clock at 1.51. it in the flat and the clock continues to wind down second and ten little gets the call on second for gunslingers will take a timeout that's their second Third down, tight end to the left. Green takes a lob here, and they get the first on third and long. John Brody threaded the ball back there to his man right past all that traffic. Good job. What a pass, and he is generating some great numbers. Oh, absolutely, Dan. So far, he's got 343 yards and three touchdowns. First down, the clock is now at 104. Brody throws a bullet and it's intercepted. Right down at the 30. Nicholas Wallace sees where the pass is going and makes sure he's there to cause trouble. Oh, nice pick. It's all about breaking down the offense and figuring out where you can do the most damage. Peter, you couldn't ask for more from him today. He has done his part. And then some. So far, he's got two interceptions. They've already won it, Dan. If they sit on the ball, the clock will tick away and end it. That last time out that the D has doesn't really amount to anything. Punt. The Gunslingers. Takes a knee, and that will do it. Well, that loss will bring up third down, but they can't be too worried about it. They're still eating up the clock. Third and 13 from your Sharks, 27 yards. Well, they'll wait until the last second to snap this one and take as much time as possible off the clock here. Montana takes a knee, and the clock will tick down. With that, let's look back at some of the plays that made the difference in this one. So, the ball game is over. Let's take a quick look back at how it went with our post-game show. We'll pick up the action midway through the third quarter. Montana would drop back and deliver a strike on this one. That set up a 29-yard field goal. The Sharks move ahead by 16. After driving 51 yards on 10 plays, Huggins would get the call for the lengthy field goal attempt, and he would, in fact, deliver. The Gunslingers connect on the field goal. Still midway through the fourth, the Gunslingers back by 13. 
Barry was definitely a key player as he was able to work his way open for a big one here. They climb back again and are now down by, by six. The Gunslingers again have it. Huggins is going to try to dial one in from very long distance. Plenty of leg to it, though. He's got it. A 53-yard field goal. The Gunslingers trailing 30 to 27. Wallace would come up with the big play to kill a drive as he was able to step in front of a wayward pass for an INT. And that will do it. The Sharks edge out a win 30 to 27. Let's wrap it up by congratulating our 2K Sports player of the game. Joe Montana dominated the game like a true legend. Well, he was the best player on the winning team. It's as simple as that. We'll see if he's able to keep up this high level of play in the games ahead. For my partner, Peter O'Keefe, this is Dan Stevens saying goodbye until next time.